Thanks ever so much for the invitation to speak here today. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a research fellow in the Third Sector Research Centre. Um, the TSRC, as we're more commonly known, is a large interdisciplinary research centre split across several universities, including University of Southampton, where I'm based, and the University of Birmingham. We're covering all sorts of research on various different topics in terms of the third sector, from big kind of quantitative data set analysis through to the role of third sector in service delivery, below the radar groups and social enterprises. Just a small flavour of what we do. There are some leaflets floating about. So why am I talking to you today? Well, I'm the lead researcher um, on the environment and the third sector strand. And there's obviously so much that we could do within that programme of work. But primarily, we're working on three projects. The first project we've termed mapping the environmental third sector, because astonishingly, we have very little information about what the environmental third sector entails. So we're using existing data sets, primarily from the Charity Commission and the National Survey of Third Sector Organisations, to learn more about the overall size of the environmental third sector, who works for the environmental third sector, its shape and the number of volunteers. The second element of our work is looking at the mainstreaming of environmental issues um, across the third sector as a whole, so not just environmental groups. And really, we've been doing that in two main ways. The first element is sort of analysing the kind of policy re response. What if the sort of the key actors in the third sector and in government, amongst others, and including funders, have been saying that the third sector needs to do in terms of the environment? And we've also been looking at how organisations can really operationalise this through specific environmental performance management tools, things like ISO 14001. And our work now is really focusing on third sector innovations for low carbon practices. And really that's looking at how third sector organisations are really enabling people to live more environmentally sustainable ways. Now, research... Research from sort of social movements absolutely tells us that the environmental third sector has been really key in communicating what we need to know about the environment. Obviously, we've talked a lot about that over the past couple of days. Um, you don't need me to tell you, but um, obviously key issues about environmental conservation, harmful pesticides, acid rain, renewable energy sources, and of course climate change have really been brought to our attention by absolutely inspirational organisations. But sadly, I think we know, all know that there's much more that needs to be done. And I think the third sector is really kind of responding to this challenge by adopting new approaches, and we've talked about this a lot at this conference, with how to engage with society. For example, we've seen the adoption of social marketing techniques to really kind of engage with a wider section of society, reaching to those people who haven't heard the environmental message. Other approaches have really called uh, for a need to more deeply examine, and this again I think is a theme that's come through this conference, our common human values and frames that order our ideas, questioning do we really need the things that we think we do. And I think some groups have gone even further, suggesting that we need to be able to engage with what we lose, things like giving up flying and dri driving and grieving for that in order to be able to live a more environmentally sustainable way. And what a lot of people have said to me in the course of our research is that actually we need all those approaches in our society. So how could more cross-sector working help? Well, very sadly, I think the third sector cannot save the world alone. And cross-sector working can really ensure that fantastic ideas go even further. Joint expertise, I think, can maximise the impact of environmental projects. And for example, we've seen the Joint Ministerial Third Sector Task Force, which brought together four different government departments and 16 third sector organisations, a lot of which were non-environmental organisations. And people have described to me how this created a new way of working for many of those involved and really opened their eyes to a new way of tackling environmental issues across sectors. The National Council for Voluntary Organisations has highlighted how the third sector and private companies can work together for environmental good. And they cite the Global Action Plan and Sky have worked together to green the way in which Sky works, but also potentially reach their enormous customer base. So given our current environmental predicament, it's clear that much more cross-sector working is required. But I think it's really important to examine the realities of working across sector. Partnerships don't always run smoothly. 
We tend to talk a lot about how brilliant they are, and of course, rightly so, in terms of securing extra funding and making sure cross-sector working does happen. But we tend to talk less about the issues that they can cause and the tensions that they bring. Things that I have learned through the course of our research that organisations have described to me is the partnerships are often looking for innovation rather than capacity building. And that can mean after the first tranche of funding or the first kind of initial rush of enthusiasm, really great initiatives can flounder instead of continuing what really works. Also, and this is something that, that people have spoken to me about, particularly yesterday, is that kind of very different and contrasting approaches to environmental issues can end up competing for the same support. And that makes it sometimes difficult for people to be able to share ideas. And in particular, since the change in government last year, a lot of organisations have really described to me how they've had to rebuild and renegotiate their partnerships in what for many has been a very uncertain future. And in particular, the ideologies, the core values of different organisations working across sectors can be very, very different and sometimes even conflicting, which makes people nervous, I think quite rightly so, about whom they get into bed with. So, how can we maximise effective partnerships in order to be able to live with environmental change? Well, perhaps we need to learn more about them. And of course, I probably would say that as a researcher. I think there's a real clear need to understand how the third sector can work across sectors in tackling the most pressing environmental issues. Only, I think, really, by doing this, can we entirely maximise the sector's ability to identify issues and really operationalise action. We know that cross-sector working can do this well, but we also really need to understand the tensions partnerships can cause in order to really be able to maximise their benefits. And I think today's session is really key in helping us think about that role of partnership working and getting a debate going. And from my perspective as an academic, I think academia needs to work far, far more with the third sector to really fully understand how cross-sector working can contribute to climate change, mitigation and adaptation. Environmental NGOs are fantastic communicators and have been really key in helping us understand the most pressing environmental concerns. But sadly, there are many parts of our society that seemingly remain untouched by these messages. However, the non-environmental third sector, the wider public sector and private companies do engage across this spectrum. Therefore, I think we really need to develop a greater understanding of how cross-sector working can really help us live with environmental change. Only then will we be able to truly maximise how all sectors can engage with society on the key environmental issues of our time. Thank you.